from John Wick to John Wayne, gunfights in movies can often look so real that it's hard to imagine how they're put together. Here at the British Action Academy, stuntman Andreas Petridis teaches students how to safely perform firearm sequences. We do Gun Rush today, which is a firearms for film course, which teaches people about the performance side of using firearms on a film set. Uh, my background, I've been a stuntman for about 28 years now. I've worked on you know, many, many productions. Star Wars, I doubled Ewan McGregor in all the lightsaber fights and obviously trained Ewan. On Bond films, I've done both. I've trained the actors and also I've played characters myself and I've doubled characters. In the old days, of course, people used to actually get shot. Nowadays, though, Films use a series of dummy replacements. There are blanks, real working weapons loaded with blank cartridges. These are for when you just need a big muzzle flash or a loud bang. Function guns are replica guns that don't actually fire. Or for cheaper, fake versions that don't look as real in a close-up, some movies use rubber guns. The person responsible for these on a set? The weapons master. And stunt performers need to know exactly how to use them. The thing with blanks is that they do still make a lot of noise and you get the kind of flash as well that you expect from a gunshot. So it's a really realistic experience. For actors, it's all about selling the idea that it's a real gun. There's two stances, box of stance, which is like so. Okay, a nice stance like that. Weapon comes out, we've got the straight arm here, slightly bent arm. Hands cupped around, thumbs over the top, that leading on the top foot. The other way is called the weaver stance, and I'm saying here, white stance, two feet, side by side. So when we move forward, as I said, the pistol becomes my eyes. As I'm moving, big steps, the pistol becomes my eyes. Action! Bang, bang. Normally, stay down, come up, do two shots. Then all you're going to do, right, keep your hands in front of you, you put the middle of your back in the middle of the mat, so you're literally doing that. That's what you need to do across to the other leg. Get into cover. Bang, bang. Now we're on the right leg. Then all I do then is I roll the same way. Here. And I'm back again, staying behind the cover. Bang, bang. And of course, reacting to being shot is important. The most important thing is, wherever the reaction is, or wherever the blow hits you, that's the first part of your body, that should be the reaction point. It's like you're being punched. When you're shot, it's like being punched. Now in his memory, if I shout bang, he'll do the reaction. Ready? And bang! Now he does it. When you do multiple reactions, that's when it gets tricky, because your timing and tempo, you've got to do it as you're going to do it. They teach you the ways to kind of roll onto your body so that you don't just smack the floor, but it does still kind of hurt. Like these guys, they don't mess about. One thing that can be very real is the weight of the equipment actors have to lug around. According to Andreas, actors on the set of Saving Private Ryan wore packs weighted down with ammo, all in the name of believability. The prop guns themselves go hand in hand with sound design. When a gun fires, you're hearing three acoustic elements. The muzzle blast sound, the impact point, and the crack sound of the bullet traveling through the air. Without this layering, a movie just doesn't seem as realistic. Cinema is filled with basic gun mistakes. So, how would a beginner go about getting it right? My advice, advice to anybody that wants to get into the industry uh, as a stunt performer is it's dedication. You know, it's part of your life, you've got to really want to do it, it's not, not a part-time hobby. And the more skills you have under your belt, the more employable you are. Yeah.